What's going on there guys, my name is Matt or Chewy as most of you will know me as and today I am bringing you a hotly requested video on my Twitch channel and on YouTube as well is to uh, basically update my, um, my settings video for prepared. Version 3.4 has just had a hotfix for prepared which apparently has decreased some VAS and solved some other issues here and there and uh, I've been playing around with my settings once again. There's a couple of things that have changed since my last video, which was uploaded two months ago, just in October, showing my P3D settings. And so I thought I would go through them again today for you. And I'm also going to very quickly touch on my PTA tool preset and then also um, the, uh, the RecSoft Cloud settings I use as well. Just as a kind of forewarning, um, when you may be watching this video, if you're watching it a couple of months after upload, there is a chance that things will change. I, I do try and, you know, tweak around with things a little bit in the settings and change them here and there. This is just what I have found works nicely for me at this current moment in time. And it works great in both the aspects of performance and visuals as well. I want my sim to perform well, but I also want it to look good as well. And um, it's often a very, very fine balance to be able to do so. So let's jump straight into it and have a look. We're on the graphics tab straight away in the display section for prepared. And uh, straight away, I'm using my, uh, obviously my, my capture, oh, sorry, not my capture card, my GPU, my graphics card, even for the display. And then the resolution is just the base stock resolution for my monitor that I play the sim on, which is 1920 times 1080. And it does auto fill the main view. Image and texture quality. Now, this is the main thing that can get tweaked around, really, for me. This is just what, as I've said, I am finding to work with me at the moment. FXAA is on, um, and it, as you can see, that it comes up with a little tab. Smooth edges of objects may decrease performance. It seems to absolutely be fine for me so far. MSAA, or multi-super sample anti-alias quality, um, is on four samples at the second. I can double that and take it to eight, but again, I'm finding a nice balance with four. Texture filtering is anisotropic four times as well. Again, this can go up even higher. You can put this up to 16, which I could probably just about get away with, but I'm finding that nice balance on four so far, keeping it in line, I guess, with MSAA. I don't know if there's any correlation between those two both being on the number four, but it looks cool and it seems to be working so far. So I can't complain. As you can tell, not really very much of a theoretical background as to why I'm choosing those options, but hey-ho. Texture resolution, I don't go all the way up to ultra. It really, it, it, I, I don't see that much of a difference in the grand scale of things. And um, it really does have an impact on performance quite badly. So I just leave the texture resolution on high, which is uh, 2048 times 2048. And that's what I'm currently using for image and texture quality. There is a chance that that may change, but it's okay for now. VSync is off currently at the moment, and my target frame rate is unlimited. There's a huge debate, and so many people do this in so many different ways. Some people lock it at 60 FPS in the sim. Some people lock it at 30 FPS. Um, I know one person whose sim looks the best out of any, any sim that I've ever seen. He leaves it unlimited in the sim, but then turns G-Sync on in his NVIDIA Inspector settings and also locks the frames to 40 there. There are so many different ways of handling frame rate control in the sim, but I keep it simple and just keep it on unlimited and for the most part it's absolutely fine i don't really have any troubles with frames with my hardware settings hardware tessellation is selected and then on the view and panel settings it's worth noting that i have got the wide view aspect ratio ticked and that is because i believe chase plane which is the software that i use to control all of my cameras um, recommends having the wide view aspect ratio ticked so i've just done that for the sake of uh, for that bit of software over to scenery now, terrain, the level of detail radius is ultra, tessellation factor is high, mesh resolution is 2 meters, and texture resolution is 15 centimeters with the land detail textures selected. Moving down scenery objects, the complexity is very dense, autogen vegetation density is extremely dense, and the autogen building density is back onto very dense as well. Water and bathymetry, water detail is high. So many people ask me what water I'm using, whether I'm using Rex Texture Direct water or what kind of crazy water details I'm using. I've literally just got the stock P3D water and popped the water detail to high. That is it, nothing else. Special effects detail, I've heard this actually doesn't really do too much in the grand scheme of things, so I've just left it on medium and low there. Again, these things can be tweaked around a heck of a lot. And just because these settings work for my hardware in my sim at this current time 
doesn't necessarily mean that it will work well for you in your sim at this current time. I'm just simply showing you guys what I use right now. Lighting, we've got HDR lighting selected. Brightness is 1.0. Bloom is 0 0.8. And saturation is 1.2. These are all in scale and, um, you know, a good balance I find for my PTA preset, which I'm going to show you guys in a little bit. Shadows, we've got the shallow, shadow quality to high. Again, this really enhances the effects of the PTA tool. And we've got the terrain shadow cast distance at 60,000 meters, as well as the cloud shadow distance at the same. And then the object cast distance is 3,000 meters. Now, the reason why these are so high at 60,000 meters is uh, I had a bug, and I've seen lots of other people get it as well, where there's sometimes like a black line showing as a shadow on the ground. And whenever you move your view around, this kind of massive black shadow line moves around. It's difficult to describe unless I've got a picture of it, which I don't think I do off the top of my head. But apparently moving your shadow cast distance um, to 60,000 or more gets rid of that. And so far since moving it this high, I've actually not seen it. So that seems to work for me, which is a nice little fix. So that's why those settings are so high there. Weather-wise, we've got the cloud draw distance at 90 miles. Again, this is something that for different people's specs will be a different number um, and will be preferred by different people. But I find 90 miles, I can still see a good distance away from me. And, you know, it, it looks good and it's not too bad on performance as well. As you can see, the slider can go right up here to, uh, to 110. So keeping it at 90 is a nice balance. It looks very good and it doesn't drain performance entirely for me. And then the cloud coverage density is on maximum. Now, this is advised if you are using Active Sky 16 for your weather provider, which is what I do use. And you want to have that full overcast effect. Um, you need to have the cloud coverage density at maximum. otherwise. The, the new feature in Active Sky 16, which allows you for that real full, proper overcast condition look, I don't think it is as well uh, shown in the simulator. Volumetric fog is on with detailed clouds ticked as well, and obviously not thermal visualization. Traffic is all completely off. Absolutely nothing there whatsoever. The only traffic that I ever see is VATSIM traffic. That is it. And that's pretty much it in terms of... Um, my p3d settings as you can tell this stuff re there really isn't too much on here i've just got all of my controls and key bindings set up one thing that i would highly advise you doing actually whilst we're here is to always try and save your buttons you can import and export controls and everything like that i would highly recommend saving everything that you do because sometimes in my personal experience and i know it's happened to others p3d for some reason just loves to reset everything and completely um, delete all of your axes commands and buttons and key commands and calibration stuff and so I have it where I can you know uh, import the profile back again so if whatever reason p3d does um, you know mess up then I can load it straight back in right moving on to PTA now this is something that has a lot of um, discussion on my channel and a lot of people ask about it what it is what it does and how to do it and they get lots of problems and everything goes wrong I'm not going to be providing support for the PTA tool, otherwise I could be here for ages. Um, but basically, um, the PTA tool allows you to edit lots of different things visually within the simulator to keep it really simple. There's loads of videos about it. I've done a full tutorial on how I install all of my PTA stuff in another video on the channel, so I'm not going to go into it here. But the one that I'm using, the preset that I'm using right now, is from the Ultimate Realism Shader Pack version 1.0 Summer Beta. And it's the normal VC shadows and saturated terrain pack. This was released by Predrag Drobag. He's very, very popular within the whole um, tweaking scene. He does a lot of work for it. A lot of people use his presets. And I just keep it simple. Again, you can get in, into real high detail looking at all of these different settings and tweaking around with them to try and get things nice. I'm lazy and I just use a preset that I thought looked good because I trust Predrag to you know do something amazing. I've I've known him for a while now, and he always has a very, very nice um, looking sim, and he always puts a lot of effort into these presets. So all I do is I just go to the preset, or just click on the preset tab here, click open, and if I go onto desktop, I think it's here, there, yeah, then you can download his presets and just load them in like so. And then all I do after that is click actions and apply the preset. And you can see here that the preset has been applied successfully. And that's it. It's pretty simple. We're currently on PTA version 2.0, and uh, this latest version was released not too long ago just to, to stay in line with the new build of P3D. You can see there it's 3.4.18, which, 
which was the the latest hot fix for P3D, as I quickly mentioned earlier on. And that's all I do with Tweak Assistant. I really don't mess around with it too much apart from that because I honestly don't see the point. Um, it's just easy. It, it really is. A lot of people get confused with it and a lot of people have trouble with it. If you read the documents that come with it and look on the website and get information about it, then you'll be absolutely fine. Right, moving on to the last thing, which is Rex Soft Clouds. I simply use Rex Soft Clouds set 16 here, and that is it. I get a lot of questions ask, asking me about my clouds and is it Asker? Is it this? Is it that? How do I do this? I simply just run Rex Soft Cloud set 16, which injects the cloud texture into the sim. And then Active Sky 16 is what provides the real world weather and, um, you know, injects the live scenario into the sim as well. In terms of Active Sky 16, it must be noted that all of my settings are on default there. I have not touched them whatsoever. And also, it must be noted that my NVIDIA Inspector is all on default as well. I am yet to explore into the realm of NVIDIA Inspector to see what that does to my sim. And that's the key for me, really, so far. I've just kept it simple. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for all the support shown during 2016. This is the final video of the year. I'm very excited to uh, kick into 2017 in style and hopefully bring out loads more content on both my YouTube channel and my Twitch channel as well. I hope you all had a great holiday season. Enjoy the new year as well. I'll see you all in 2017. Don't forget to leave a comment, like the video as well, and subscribe to the channel. It's very much appreciated. See you guys soon.